Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we've got a knife that's only available in the United States of America. I thought it was available in more places. Uh, I contacted them after a viewer of mine suggested that I review one of their knives or more. And uh, they're being sold on Amazon.com, which is American. And I looked at them. I decided I'd email the company and they said, hey, we'll send you some stuff to review. They sent me this. This is the uh, Olera. I think I'm saying it close to how it's supposed to be spe 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 blah, 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 pronounced. <laughs> uh, this is one of their folding knives. They've got uh, several folding knives, a, a small handful, and they've got a bunch of fixed blades as well, which I've got a couple of in the mail coming to me uh, from the United States as well. I had them sent to my friend in Nebraska, and just the way he had to divvy up the packages to mail them to me, I don't have the fixed blades here yet. And I unboxed this a little while ago. This is model number, that was Bandit jumping up on my bed. <laughs> uh, this is model number OL-0027, so model 27. It's in their tactical series, their TAC series, G10 handle scales. And uh, yeah, it's not a super light knife. It's definitely a full size folder and you might be interested in it. Let's put this thing on the tabletop and take a good look at it. All right, uh, oh, let me say one thing that I forgot to say in the intro, the steel. They like to use 420HC, that's the high carbon stainless steel that usually has a rock, I don't know why my mouth just is not working today. That usually has a rock wall hardness of around 57, which is quite good. Uh, soft enough to be able to sharpen in the field, hard enough to be, you know, a decent uh, kind of knife steel. Works quite well. You know, better than a number of other budget knives, budget steels, uh, which is why, you know, somebody like Buck, a company like Buck, still uses 420HC a lot. Uh, they still even use 420 sometimes, which, yeah, probably not. 420 is quite a bit softer than 420HC. 57 on the Rockwell scale. Yeah, I like that. No problem at all with that. We've got a blade that's a little over an eighth of an inch thick, full-size handle, steel backspacer, which I think they missed a trick there. I think they should have, well, they wanted to do a glass breaker back here, which no, I'm not fond of that at all. But that's easy to take care of uh, for a lot of guys who've got, uh, you know, some basic uh, garage shop type of equipment. You can, you know, get rid of that, no problem even just a vise and a metal file, and you can get rid of that. So, which, if I was keeping this knife, I would do that. But uh, I don't think this will go into my permanent collection, but let's talk about it anyways, because it is a decent knife, especially for the price. This is not expensive at all. Under 30 US dollars, not bad. Sides comparison with the Ontario Rat 1, I've lined them up here, very similar. Pretty much the same length, pretty much the same handle depth, uh, a little bit thicker in the handle, not an awful lot. This guy's only got a right side tip up carry, whereas of course the Ontario Rat's got a four way pocket clip, which is kind of useful. G10 handle scales, it's not a super great G10, but it's a 3D mill G10. It offers a lot of grip in hand, maybe too much sometimes. There's some spots where it gets a little hot in hand sometimes. Not very much. It's actually pretty good. And it's easy to uh, round off G10 to make it a little bit softer to the hand. So let's take a close look at this thing now. Here's the blade. My light. Ow. Felt like I got a shock. But I didn't. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Let's, um, yeah. I'm going to change some of the light just a bit. There, I think that's... Oh, I did. I actually touched myself with... I touched myself with the edge. I just barely touched my skin right there with the cutting edge because this knife is one of the sharpest knives out of the box 
that I've ever had. It's in there in the top five of the sharpest knives out of the box. Okay, I'm back with a Band-Aid now, a bandage, uh, because you don't want to see blood, and YouTube uh, won't allow monetization or you know, doesn't like to monetize videos where there's blood in them. So, very, very sharp blade from the factory. Uh, we've got, I don't know, what are you going to call this? I like to call these clip point blades because it's clipped right at the end. Some people may call it a reverse tanto. You know, I've mentioned, I've talked about why I don't like that term in the past. So, yeah, it is this style of blade so that you know if you want to buy it, this is what it looks like. We've got a swedge along here. There's uh, no jimping on the spine of the blade, but you know it goes up a little bit. So that's a spot where the thumb likes to sit. It almost behaves a little bit like jimping there to get a little more secure grip with your thumb. I do wish there was some jimping in there actually, because that little ramp up, you know, it just isn't quite enough to get a, a nice grip. My thumb wanted to move around when I was doing harder work. I didn't do an awful lot of cutting with this, just enough to see that, you know, it cuts really well, and it's still sharp after doing a lot of preliminary cutting already, some testing. A lot of belly, the whole blade's actually belly. There's, that section's not really straight back here, that's nice. We've got a saber grind. It looks like it's, um, the whole bevel is, you know, machine beveled, because there's tiny little uh, vertical lines where the final beveling happened by machine. It's slightly stonewashed, and actually the bevel's slightly stonewashed too, so they did a light stonewash. Sharpness choil, that sharpness choil is a little bit too small. It uh, rides up into the plunge. So the plunge is this section right here. Let me get something to point with. It's this section here where it goes from full thickness down to the bevel grind. That transition zone is the plunge. And when that transition zone is, if I can get this to focus, when that transition zone uh, takes too long to come down, then you need a bigger sharpness toil because if you sharpen up into that, you know, it just makes this zone here a little bit ugly. So yeah, it needs a bigger sharpness toil, which I could manually do as well if I wanted to. And uh, then we go to the Ricasso. It's all nice and flat. Nothing else there. The uh, brand name's up here. So clearly that's just laser etched in there with a bit of a swoosh underneath it. Nothing else written on the knife anywhere. So, yeah, I don't mind that. But I would like the steel type written somewhere. It's nice. The flipper tab is, you know, just typical kind of flipper tab. It's got a zone across there that's almost flat, and you can just uh, push down and it flips right out, or you can light switch it. it works great. The detent is very weak on this guy, and uh, I'm going to see if I can fix that. My detent video doesn't talk in depth about both a detent that's too strong and a detent that's too soft. So in the near future, meaning the next two months, I'll do a video that's more um, exhaustive on how to fix detents both too hard and too soft. I'll try to get that done in the next couple of months. So this one, the detent's a little bit soft. Lock up, it's a little bit later than I like a new knife to be, but there's still a lot of life on it. It's going to wear across in time a fair bit. The uh, lock bar release, it's just got the regular punched out edge on there. It's not sharp to cut you, but it's just a sharp corner. So this edge in here, where you're pushing over to release the lock, it gets a little hot on the thumb. It digs into thumb, especially if I'm repeatedly doing it, you know, if I'm playing with the knife, or while I was testing it frequently, opening it and closing it. Uh, the liners are not skeletonized at all. They are recessed liners, so the G10 stands on above them, so you don't see the liners, unless you look at the uh, edge just like that. You can see the liner beneath there. 3D milling on them. Not bad. Uh, when I'm holding the knife like this, when I was squeezing it hard, like in the fist grip, um, maybe I'll be able to do it hard for just a few seconds here and see what my fingertips look like. There you go. You can see those lines. It 
kind of digs in on the fingertips, not the most comfortable for extended use. Uh, in my left hand, it was quite a bit better because the pocket clip, but still, look at these fingers. That was just from a few seconds. So, a little bit too pointy. These ridges have, the, the, the points on them are a little too sharp, but it's a nice design. We've got uh, screws here. You need uh, T8, I believe. T8 screws, and it's very loose from the factory, very easy to adjust. Uh, and uh, I didn't have to adjust it at all. That's the first time I've turned on it, and it just very easily came loose. Uh, these other screws, they're all going to be T6s. Fair bit of play here. Uh, check this screw out here. Yeah, these are not high-end screws. And they're button screws that are recessed. Yeah, I don't like that, but it's not a too big a deal on a knife this price. Pocket clip, it's got a flat top at the end. So it doesn't get hot in the grip on, on the end there. It's got standoffs. They're nice. They're not just straight. They're little hourglass shaped standoffs. Quite nice. I kind of like that. Let's see how well it goes into a pocket. As I said, it, that little top edge is nice. It climbs right over. So no problem there. Push it down and it ends at that first pin. So you get a fair bit of knife sticking out of the pocket. Not a super crazy amount. Let's measure it in inches because there's no centimeters on this thing. Yeah, it's about an inch sticking out. If you don't mind that, that's just fine. If you don't like that, you get a different knife, right? Pocket clip, for what it is, it's okay. Nothing special, but nothing terrible. The grips. You know, a reverse grip, not too bad. Thumb goes across up there. But if you want a reverse pull grip like this, you're, where you're pulling towards yourself, because that's a very powerful movement, you, sometimes you just need to cut through stuff, then the glass breaker gets in the way. Yeah, it's just not that great. And how well does a unhardened steel glass breaker work anyways? Eh, arguably not that good. Uh, you know, you can use your fist to hit against the window and break it like a car window and stuff, sure. So it would work, but it'd be better off if it had like a tungsten tip like Ganzo does on their glass breakers. So there you go. That's what that looks like. Let's just take this thing apart now and then we'll do the measurements. Okay, like I showed before, the pivot pin, very loose and easy. So I got that screw out, round pivot pin. So free spinning. Don't really like that, but it's okay. Uh, I'm going to take the blade out of here because it's easy to take out now. Okay, the ball bearings. At least they've got a phosphor bronze cage for it, but those ball bearings are really tiny and it's small in diameter as well, uh, which can lead to, you know, blade play, side to side blade play a little more easily. But, you know, it's ball bearings. And yeah, the action, you know, fairly good. And uh, they used uh, just a little bit of lubrication that I can find in there. Not grease, just a little bit of oil in there. Not bad. Okay, and so I went to take this apart and I'm just using a little screwdriver so I don't have too much power. And I put it in there and I noticed right away this thing was already stripped. I went to the other side. Yeah, that's very, very close to stripped already. This product. Drive grip, anti cam out fluid. And so here's different kinds of screws. Helps prevent fasteners from stripping. Vibratite. That's a, it's made by ND Industries in the United States, made in USA, in uh, Troy, Michigan. So what you do with this stuff is you shake it up. There's other brands that... Uh, make a similar kind of anti camo fluid. But this stuff, it's uh, a clear liquid. I just got some on my fingertip there, but you don't need that part. You need that, it's got little black grit floating in it. You have to shake it up or else all you're gonna get out is some of that clear liquid. And what that does is it creates friction and it helps keep your screws from stripping out. It keeps the engagement 
Is that, that no that screw's so stripped that I wouldn't be able to do it at all anyways. And this side I just need a little bit more. I want to make sure that there is a whole bunch of that black stuff on here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a T7 screwdriver because that might fit in there better. So here's a T7 that uh, it still has some of this drive grip on there. If you don't clean it off very well when you're done using it, it sort of sticks. And I just want to make sure there's lots on here. Because I've had to use T7 in the past to get this done. I believe they use Loctite in here, uh, which I really dislike. So yes, it's a really good idea to have T7. Yeah, there's the Loctite right there, some white stuff. Get a T7 screwdriver in your set too. I think I'm going to order a T7 of uh, this type. I got this. This is a Wera brand from Germany. KCTools.com. It's an American company that sells screwdrivers mostly and other tools from Germany. You know, Germany makes some good tools. So, uh, whoa, that one doesn't feel good. It feels too tight to fit that in there. So, uh, let's try this one. Yeah, very tight. I'm using the T6 again now. Because sometimes you need to take your knives apart. So that's one of the reasons why I dislike thread locker. Even though I'm doing a test right now for using thread locker on knives, the blue stuff. So there you go. Took it apart, looks okay. Um, I'm not gonna take the pocket clip apart. Steel ball bearing here, and of course, those tiny steel ball bearings that were on the inside. Very simple setup. Uh, now I'm gonna put this thing back together and then we'll get to the dimensions and sizes and stuff. Actually, before we do the dimensions, there's a couple things I forgot to tell you. Blade alignment. It's a little bit off to one side, and there's some side-to-side -side blade play, and it makes complete sense now with those really tiny ball bearings. The more narrow they are around in diameter, the easier it is to have side-to-side -side blade play, especially with those tiny little balls in there. It's just not, you know, yeah, it's not wise. They should have used bigger ball bearings, bigger in every way. Now, Let's go over all the dimension sizes and stuff, and I'll have this tape measure on the screen while I'm doing that. So when you see this disappear, I'm done talking about the sizes and stuff. So if you don't want to hear that stuff, there you go. The weight for this knife, 167 grams, 5.95 ounces. Sharpness from the factory, 40 bess. 200 and less is considered sharp. Length of the cutting edge now, 9.05 centimeters, 3.563 inches. The blade length tipped to the closest spot on the handle, 9.36 centimeters. That's uh, 3.685 inches. The blade thickness, 3.52 millimeters. That's 0.1385 inches. So a bit over an eighth of an inch. That's nice. The blade depth, the widest point, 28.54 millimeters. That's 1.1235 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, it's 0.68 millimeters thick. So this main bevel here, how thick it is just before that grind, 27,007 inch. Now for the handle, the handle length, 12.65 centimeters, 4.98 inches, so five inches of G10. The grip area, it's about 10 centimeters, about four inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, 14.9 millimeters, that's 0.5865 inches. The handle depth, 
the widest part in the grip, or the deepest part in the grip, is 29.05 centimeters, millimeters, millimeters, 1.1435 inches. And the depth of the knife when it's closed, the widest point, 40.54 millimeters, 1.596 inches. Total length of the knife with the blade deployed is 22.42 centimeters, 8.827. So tip to the very tip of the glass breaker. Yeah, the price, uh, it depends on where you buy it. You can buy it right from their website, orellausa.com, $29.85 US. But you can get it on Amazon for $26.99. Uh, they're out of stock when I checked a few days ago. They might be back in stock again. They also have an eBay store, and on eBay it's another price, $28.99. Is it worth the price? If you're looking for a big chunky knife that's easy to sharpen in the field and yet is a decent steel, very corrosion resistant. 420 is one of the more corrosion resistant uh, steels out there. So this is a really good stainless steel with a decent durability on the edge, a sharpening ability that is not too bad. The lock release, I wish that that edge was a little bit softer. I can fix that. I don't like the glass breaker. I can fix that. I would have preferred aluminum backspacer. Not a big deal, really. Uh, the jimping, it gets a little hot. Not the jimping. The uh, G10 gets a little hot in the hand back here. That's not hard to fix either. The screws, they're way too soft. The body screws, uh, they're not good. They're, they just aren't good. But if you're very careful and you get a product like Drive Grip, uh, you can save yourself from getting into a lot of trouble. I advise very, very highly to get high-end screwdrivers so that they're at consistent um, sizes on the tips and something like this. Cheap screwdrivers on cheap screws, you're going to strip them out. It's not bad. It's not great. It's certainly a user. It's that user quality. It's not collector quality, not at all but it is definitely user quality. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Thank you for watching this video. And uh, remember friends, like, share, comment, subscribe. And while you're doing all that, if you're playing with a knife, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.